This thing we thought about after he passed. All right, well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Wow, we have a nice crowd here. I want to particularly welcome our fire department who are taking up the back section there. Thanks for coming out, guys. We appreciate having you here. Uh, we begin our meetings as we always do with public audience. Uh, per our rules, we extend public audience to each individual for five minutes. If you feel you have more to say, we're happy to stay after a meeting or schedule another time to meet with you. So if you don't get a chance to say everything you want, we're happy to listen to you at a different time. Um, these are the rules established by the Board of Selectmen after we were elected, and so they're the rules that we follow. So we welcome members of the audience for a public audience now. Is there anyone who would like to speak? Ms. Coe. Oh, thank you. John <laughs> Coe, 26 Whitcomb Drive. I would like to bring to your attention that Simsbury votes on November 8th will not only be voting for president, but there will be a referendum vote for a professional town manager for the CEO of Simsbury. To add to the confusion, there will be six questions for changes to be added to or deleted from the charter. It is time that Simsbury is managed by a professional town manager, as are both Avon and Farmington. Past first selectmen Peggy Shanks, Anita Miller, and Mary Glassman are all in favor of changing the government to a town manager. <coughs> SCTV and YouTube have an excellent documentary on the town council form of local government. This is worth watching. With over a thousand housing units being built and two assisted living buildings with hundreds of units, Simsbury's population will be growing by the thousands. Simsbury will need a professional manager to provide a roadmap into the future. A professional management will provide a, pro a provide a strategic plan for the growth and services needed in the future. Simsbury's increased population will demand increased services from the community, roads that are passable in a timely manner, increased public transportation, sewers that will provide waste management, and clean water provided from the local wells. Change of this magnitude will change the character of Simsbury forever. At the present time, Simsbury has many privately owned sewer systems that were once part of the old Ensign Bickford community. These clay pipes are about 75 years old and are somewhat compromised, causing occasional backups. At the present time, there are several developments and businesses that have acquired the clay pipes once owned by Ensign Bickford. All the clay sewer pipes must be brought up to standard from multiple communities before the WPCA can acquire them who will pay for the upgrade. Under the direction of First Selectman Lisa Heavener, I was told that I could interact with all departments to have my concerns answered. Recently, I was interested in reviewing the proposal submitted by the Silverman Group on the density of the property. On many occasions, the town planner, Jamie Rabbit, was trying to limit my review of planning and zoning materials and interaction with his staff. Town planner, Jamie Rabbit, is not only paid by the taxpayers, but he is also required to answer to the public without any hostility to the public. The planning department is pivotal to Simsbury's quality of life, and the increase in development is or should be a concern for everyone. Town planner Jamie Rabbit does not live in town, but his legacy will last forever. I am asking the first selectman, Lisa Heaton, and direct town planner Jamie Rabbit to be more responsive to the public. The Simsbury's Women's Club had a very successful arts and crafts festival. There weren't any entry fees. This festival has been an annual event. However, this year, they had to compete with the Pack Blues Festival that was presenting concerts all day into the evening at the gate price of $40 to $50 for an entry fee. It became challenging for the shared parking and use of the space on Iron Horse Boulevard. Why did the town allow the Pack to compete with the Women's Club? This appears to be poor planning. The concerts were a concern to the public in the evening, with many people disturbed with the volume of the music in the evening hours. Maybe it is time to have a noise ordinance for the town, since there are many times when the concerts are creating a public nuisance. 
It appears from the increase in calls to Simsbury Police Department that Simsbury is not immune to increase in alcohol addiction, children with suicidal tendencies, many other addictions, and recent events of a 19-year-old resident selling and using marijuana on Westledge Road, case number 20089. Recently, there have been several obituaries attributed to addiction deaths. It appears to me that the Valley Towns will have an opportunity for regionalization for services by providing a Department of Mental Health and Addiction Services with many of the correct schools repurposed for mental health and addiction services. A memo from the State Library states, quote, due to limitation, all libraries will restrict patrons' place holds to five per person, end quote. I recently was restricted from this regional service. Has the state placed the limit due to budgetary restrictions? CTEC Solar has not paid their taxes to date and should not be a provider for the solar system for the Board of Education school roof. Since there is no longer any consensus for a senior center slash community center on Iron Horse Boulevard, I would like to know if it will be removed from the capital projects plan. All of my comments will be posted on Simsbury Patch news feed on Facebook, Twitter at Jonko, and Simsbury Forum Topics. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak a public audience? Mr. Kalishman. Thank you. Okay, you can start my time now. Robert Kalishman, Simsbury, and uh, I appear before you this evening as a candidate and the opponent to John Hampton. And the reason I'm running uh, for a state representative in Simsbury is to stop the corruption and favoritism that is being expunged and or expouted in, in Simsbury. Uh, Case in point, uh, Mr. Hampton is receiving $28,187 in my tax dollars as, a, as public funds. He's going to the public trough and he's taking $28,187 in public money. In addition, he draws a salary for being state representative, plus he gets all his expenses, plus the fact that there is a question I have, where, how come we don't see the 16, number 16, District 16? This is a relish plate that the representative from Simsbury has the honor of putting this on his car. Is he ashamed that he represents Simsbury? So it's not on any vehicles that he drives or drives in. Is he driving a vehicle? The, nobody knows. Nobody has the answer. What are, we, what are we hiding from the public? I have a I have a very serious problem. My political signs are being taken. I didn't take public money. I didn't take twenty eight thousand dollars. I signed a document that I will not spend more than $1,000 of my own per personal money. That's my pocket money. That's the money that I spend, one under $1,000. He's spending much more. And on top of it, are, is it his surrogates that are going out stealing my signs? Is it his surrogates that are tampering with the signs off my car? Well, I have photographs of two Democrats taking and tampering with the car signs on my, on my vehicle. They took them off. And then one man had the honesty and dignity to go back and put it back on after one insisted on tearing it and throwing it on the floor. That's not right. Is that your surrogates doing that? Why don't you ask him that when he gives this report? The other thing, who is he to give out a war medal? He's not authorized to give out a war medal. Made a big dog and pony show down at the Eno 
handing out war medals. That's an honor. And it's, it's disputed if the state even has. It's, it's not recognized by the military. You can't wear that on a military uniform. But yet it was a dog and pony show. And he was handing out a war medal. Never served a day in his life. And the other thing, have you ever gone and taken a permit to raise funds when you raise that money that you take up to Rocky Hill to the veterans? Have you ever taken out a permit to take that money that you, you claim you give to veterans? We don't know how much you're giving them. I asked the question because I served as a commissioner for the Department of Veterans Affairs, state of Connecticut, under three governors. And I ask that question. I'm entitled to an answer. The next thing we go into. We were supposed to receive a state grant for this monument to 100 dead veterans, dead service throughout the wars. And it was put up. They made a dog and pony show. Mr. Hampton came down with a few Democratic veterans and they came down and he said, look what we, we gave you a check, $150,000. Where's the $150,000, John? Here's an article that states, Veterans Project Delay. This is in September. December 12th, 2015. Mr. Kalshman, it's been five minutes. I, I don't blame you. Thank Another you. one of your surrogates cut Thank me off. you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kalshman. Is there anyone else who would like to speak a public Vote audience? Vote G five and let's stop the corruption in Simpson. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak a public audience? Colleen, if you don't object, do you mind having the fire department go first in the presentation? They have another me. Uh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> um, and uh, actually, before we even do that, I'd like to take a few, um, few motions to amend the agenda. We had some late submissions based on, on constituents who submitted some stuff. May I have a motion to add item D, accept a donation from the members of uh, Simsbury Farms Golf Leagues toward a memorial clock in honor of Donald Warner with our thanks. So moved. Second. 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 Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion is amended. May I have a motion uh, to amend the agenda under appointments and resignations to appoint two members of the Board of Finance to the Simsbury Farms Revenue Fund Subcommittee, Linda Schofield and Robert Pomeroy? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. May I have a motion under appointments and resignations to appoint uh, Richard Jones to the Ethics Committee? So moved. so moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 May I please have a motion to waive fees at Eno on October 2nd for a submission that we just received about five minutes ago? <laughs> <laughs> I'll make that motion that we're amending the agenda to waive the fees. I'll second it. Um, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. The motion is amended. And we will begin with presentations. The first uh, is presentations from the fire department. So I'll call up. Ah, here we go. He <laughs> 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 said he was there before. And can you just introduce? Sure. You know, too late. <laughs> As the fire department runs out to the fire. Right. Um, Good, e good evening, everyone. My name is Dan Coppinger, and I'm the Vice President of the Simsbury Fire District. Our President, Gary Wilcox, uh, would have been here this evening to present this award. He's actually out of the country this evening, uh, up north. Um, but I, I'm going to present an award tonight for uh, uh, an awesome family here in Simsbury that did something pretty unbelievable. And uh, the fire district felt that we really have to do something to, to recognize uh, a, a, a great couple who were neighbors, I wish they were my neighbors, you know, the, these are the kind of people that you want to have as your neighbors that look out for you. And uh, so this evening, I, I'd like to have the Tartaglia family come on up here, please. And you can, you can hang out right here. I'm going to read the award that we're, we're going to give you here. Uh, before I do that, though, I just want to also say that um, some of you may have heard there, there's a, a national program. It's called If You See Something, Say Something. And it's very popular uh, in law enforcement because it is uh, a national program. Uh, you might, you've seen the ads on television. And it, it, all it is is, hey, if you see something suspicious or if you see something that you feel is, it should 
you should notify uh, uh, public safety. You should make a phone call and, and do something. And uh, it's primarily affiliated with, with crime prevention and, and terrorism and, and things like that. But it also is perfect for if, if you see something like a fire or something dangerous. So uh, I'm going to read this award. This is the Simsbury Fire District Recognition Award. On July 27th at approximately 4.25 a.m., Mr. and Mrs. Tartaglia, who live at 41 West Point Terrace, awoke to get ready for work when they noticed a large black cloud of smoke coming from a house behind theirs, located at 15 Crestview Road. Mr. Tartaglia immediately called the fire department via 911, and Mrs. Tartaglia drove over to 15 Crestview Road and alerted the residents who were still asleep. The fire was consuming the attached garage and was starting to enter the attic space. The smoke detectors did not alert the sleeping family as the smoke had not yet entered the house. It was very probable that the roof and ceiling could have collapsed and trapped the family before the smoke detectors were even activated. It is quite likely that this family would have sustained serious injuries or worse if not for the quick actions of Mark and Janelle Tartaglia. It is indeed a pleasure to present this recognition award to Mark and Janelle Tartaglia for their quick response and actions that morning in July. Dated this 22nd day of September 2016, our Fire Chief Jim Baldis, Fire Marshal Kevin Kowalski, President Gary Wilcox, and our District Clerk John Saluri. So this is, this is an honor to present this to you. Um, it takes a lot of courage to do what you, what you all did. And uh, you're, you're a great resident of Simsbury. I know you're searching around. Hope <laughs> <laughs> There's more. <laughs> I have another thing for you. So I have the distinct honor of uh, reading on behalf of our first selectman the uh, Town of Simsbury Proclamation. Whereas on the early morning of July 27, 2016, Mr. and Mrs. Tartaglia of 41 West Point Terrace noted, noticed large, a large black cloud of smoke at 15 Crestwood Road. And whereas Mr. Mark Tartaglia called the fire department and Whereas Miss uh, Janelle Tartaglia drove to 15 Crestwood Road and alerted Miss uh, Dana Wild and her young children who were sleeping and Crestwood Crestview, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Somebody who lives on Crestwood got really nervous. <laughs> Whereas the courageous and quick actions of Mr. and Mrs. Sartaglia prevented the Wild family from potentially sustaining serious injury. Now, for uh, now, therefore, let it be known, I, Lisa um, L. Uh, Hebner. Ms. Uh, first selectman of the town of Simsbury do uh, re hereby recognize for the heroic and civic actions Mark and Janelle Tartaglia. In witness thereof, I have placed my seal in the great seal of the town of Simsbury, dated uh, this day, the 26th of September, 2016. I know the fire department wants to stay, but if you feel like <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome to stay, we'd be honored. Thank you. Thank all of you for coming out tonight. It means a lot that you were here to support. Thank you, everyone. I didn't notice it. That was good stuff. That was good stuff. <laughs> well, that's what got you. Very inspiring.
All right, we will move on to uh, Colleen. It's hard, a tough act to follow. <laughs> really exciting. I um, good evening. Lisa just asked me to stop by and um, just go over the July collections. Um, and I passed out um, some information. Our online um, payments have been every year just increasing. Um, obviously, you can tell that the trend of that's where people want to go. Um, for the first time this year, July 29th, we had um, in one day a million three online payments. And before that, the most we've ever had was like not even 500,000. So that day, for some reason, everybody decided to pay. And the system worked. And the system worked. All it right. didn't fail. The system worked. <laughs> um, so as you can see, the first one is just the number of online transactions um, since we started going online, which was in 2013. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, every year just increasing. Um, the second one is just the volume. You can see last year we collected over six million online. This year it was up through August, it was eight million seven five. And the third one is, I think, the most important one, which is kind of interesting. Um, the number of people that are requesting um, paperless billing, which is just going to help with the cost of, you know, printing and mailing. Um, so you can see last year we had 1,100 people, and this year it was, you know, 3,100 pe 3, people requested. And new this year, um, this will be interesting to see next year, um, they have where you pay by text. So you had the opportunity this year when you went online to pay, if you want to text, you put your phone number, and next year when there's a new bill, they'll automatically text you a message telling you of a new invoice. And if you, it's going to be all right there, if you'd like to pay, you just hit the word pay and your taxes. Obviously, they'll have your information. You have to put in your banking information of what you want, and it'll get paid. So it's getting easier and easier to pay your taxes, which I know you both. <laughs> um, the other thing, um, like I said, th this um, past July was a very good collection. Um, we had a 98.25 collection. And compared to last year, it was 97.2, and the prior year it was 97.3. And I think a lot of that is it's just it's getting easier to pay. Um, a lot of people are just going online. It doesn't matter if you're in Simsbury, if you have your bill or not. You can look up the information right online. It's all right there. Print out bills. Um, another thing I want to remind people: um, again, this is probably our fifth or sixth year now with Simsbury Bank. The P.O. box that if you do mail your bill to Woolburn is Simsbury Bank's processing center for us. I know a lot of people wonder why we have our bills, our, why the bills go to Woolburn, Mass., but that is Simsbury Bank's processing center. Um, and other than that, other than thanking all of our responsible taxpayers, it's, mm -hmm. it's been really a good summer. So Thank you for your efforts, Colleen, yes, thank and you. great job. Does anyone have any questions for Colleen while she's here? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we will now uh, go on to a presentation. I think, Woody, are you doing the presentation tonight? I'm so. Oh, trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and the Simsbury Housing Authority, as you'll recall, um, members of this board requested that the boards we appoint come in and report to the board and tell us a little bit about what their committee's purpose is and uh, their goals and what they're working on. So we're pleased to welcome Woody Edens from um, Pastor Woody Edens and good friend to the town of Simsbury. Thank you. And what we're working on right now is to get a slideshow. <laughs> ah. Tell a joke. Uh, <laughs> actually, Ed said uh, I really had to keep this short that people would much rather hear uh, Hillary and Don than me, so I will move as quickly as possible. I, I, I was going to say, very much how loosely are you defining rather <laughs> would no, here? No. <laughs> I am um, one of five commissioners that oversees the housing authority here, uh, which this uh, board appoints. And uh, we meet every month and go over the items that are happening at the Housing Authority, try to help with the problems. We have uh, hired staff. Ed LaMontagne is the uh, head of that staff and uh, does, I believe, a great job of keeping everything running. Ron Zappella is head of the Housing Commission. He's the president of the commissioners. He was not able to be here tonight. He asked me if I would fill in in his absence. Okay, we're coming into focus here. Awesome. I would say that you should be very proud of Simsbury. 
towns are required to have some type of housing made available for people with limited incomes, and you do a great job of that. Uh, we have 13 beautifully wooded acres on the north side of town. Just before you get to Granby, if you look to the right, you see the housing authority. The mission of the authority is to provide safe, affordable housing for limited income seniors and individuals with disabilities. Originally, it was basically for the elderly, and uh, that's now been redefined also for persons with disabilities. So some of the residents there are do have disabilities. The Housing Authority is broken into three different parts. The Owen L. Murphy apartments are totally independent living, housing for people age 62 and over, and the disabled. Uh, there are 70 different units there. Most of the times they are filled, so usually we have one or two vacancies, but uh, there is a waiting list for people to get in. It's a diverse group of people that we have, and yet it's a very friendly group. I we we invite you to come and walk through, and you'll see what a pleasant uh, experience it is to see the authority. Second area is Virginia Connolly Residence, which is a large building, two-story building, that has 40 rooms, efficiency units, designed for individual living. The residents who live there receive one meal each day, lunch meal. They have a small kitchen in their apartment to provide other meals, and they have weekly housekeeping available as well. The third part of the program is an assisted living program, which we generally contract out to an outside agency that comes in, uh, allowing people to age in place. So one of the things we've noticed is that people are able to stay in their homes there in Virginia Conley, even as they get older and older which I think is a great thing because, again, it's a wonderful, warm community. People come down for lunch and stay and share and talk. Income comes from rents, from subsidies from the Department of Housing, from grants, from donations from individuals, from commercial uh, establishments, private and civic organizations. The authority does not receive any money from the town of Simsbury. If you would like to change that, we're very open to it. <laughs> <laughs> There are five commissioners appointed by the board uh, who oversee the working. There are staff that are uh, very dedicated, uh, from Ed LaMontagne, Christine Winter, who are here, um, point out uh, Kay Coffey, who is also here. Kay is the resident commissioner uh, as well. There are a lot of programs that go on. Uh, one of the ones that happened recently was a celebration of the 25th anniversary of Virginia Conley. We see some, some familiar faces up there as we uh, recognize 25 years since um, Virginia Conley was built, and these are relatives, descendants of her, and uh, celebrating her commitment, making the Virginia Conley residents a possibility. Happy anniversary. One of the perks we get is to be able to show up at these events and uh, celebrate with them and have lunch with them and the food is delicious there. <laughs> Outside groups play a big part in the housing authority, uh, coming in to do different things and particularly like to lift up Westminster School. They have been coming in for several years, working on the grounds, uh, providing uh, support work for the staff that keep the grounds up. Um, and they also have relationships meeting with the seniors who are there and talking with them. A very positive thing, not only for the students who come, but certainly for the seniors who are there as well. There are picnics and other activities that are planned that go on. Uh, there's an end of the spring picnic, summer picnic, um, that. Uh, the staff provides and the kitchen crew is always willing and works very hard to make these a possibility. Recently we received a grant, a small cities grant, because there was a lot of work that was needed to be done. The main two items was a new roof on the Virginia Conley residence, which uh, has already been completed and now then the work has started on the uh, driveway and the sidewalks. As we 
did the work, made the application for the grants. We worked with the town of Simsbury. We learned quite a bit about uh, all kinds of additional expenses, <laughs> learned more than we ever wanted to know about <laughs> getting grants. We did receive a grant, uh, three quarters of a million dollars approximately, and it will do most of the work we had hoped to do. It will not do all of it, but it will do most of it. So we're looking forward to that and hope in the future to receive future grants to be able to complete the work. But there are other improvements which are going on. I'll let you read about those. And we face challenges every year because uh, money is always tight and uh, our staff does a fantastic job with the budget they have. Uh, there's turnover that we experience as residents get older. Oftentimes they must move to somewhere where they can receive more services to nursing homes. Some of the residents of the Murphy just uh, decide to leave, go somewhere else. And so we're constantly trying to get the places back in shape and rent it as quickly as possible since the rent is the major source of income. Um, we're small and so sort of it's seasonal. During the spring and summer, people like to move in. If somebody moves out in the middle of the winter, it's very hard to get somebody else who wants to come in in the middle of the winter. Sometimes we have apartments vacant for a while. Those are some of the challenges we face. Um, other tra challenges, uh, limited transportation, unless people have a car, own a car, it's difficult to get transportation to doctors and so forth. Ride share is good, but again, it is limited. We try to increase our market exposure. Christine does a great job of uh, advertising at the Chamber of Commerce, at Septemberfest, at other activities that are going on in town to let people know we exist. It's been said we are the best kept secret in town. Nobody knows we have a housing authority here that provides such great services. And so we want to make all of you aware of that uh, and invite you to come up, look through the place and see what a wonderful place it is. People come here from all over. It is, residency is not required. You don't have to be a resident of Simsbury to live there. As a matter of fact, you don't have to be a resident of the state of Connecticut to live there. Uh, people come from all over uh, to live there. Are there any questions that we can answer? I just want to point out the food really is outstanding. <laughs> Anytime I'm invited, I accept because uh, you have a great chef there. Really, Thank you. attention to detail. It's wonderful food. Sure. Um, some of us know the answer to this, but for the, <laughs> the benefit of the public at large, um, maybe Ed or Christine could touch on how one goes about applying um, to the authority for one of the services well, available. They can certainly go online at simsburyha.com. Um, that website, we do have applications which are downloadable. It also gives you a little bit more information about the two properties that we operate. In addition to that, they could always call the office at 860-651-8472, which I just gave my home phone number. <laughs> <laughs> are in trouble tomorrow. Call them up. That lives to work. Sorry, say that again, Ed. <laughs> so, I never <laughs> call. <laughs> okay. So the housing authority phone number is, as it says on the screen, 658 <laughs> Or seven, call that one first, please. Uh, <laughs> and, and obviously, we do have applications that we can mail out to interested uh, persons. And tours are available if We're somebody is interested in seeing the property. Calling Christine and setting an appointment to do so, yes. Yes, and they are very helpful in the office. People come in and they, they're not sure how to go about things, and uh, they are great helping people get the applications done. And sometimes the wait time is very short for people mm -hmm. to be able to move in. Thank you. We appreciate that. A lot of people Absolutely. may not know what the Housing Authority does and how all that you have to offer, but it really is a lovely facility and just wonderful people. I have lots of good friends who live there, including Kay. <laughs> so uh, thank you for doing this presentation. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All right, and now we're moving on to the legislative update from Representative John Hampton and Senator Kevin Wickos. Um, <coughs> Sloan. Sloan. <laughs> <laughs> Sloan, do you want a copy of the presentation for your... And here's the one for the tax. So we're very pleased to have both John and Kevin here. As you know, there's been a lot going on at the state capitol that will likely impact uh, the town of Simsbury. So it's great to have our representatives here to give us an update as a... Uh, 
part of their job, and we're very appreciative that you made the time to come to us and welcome. Thank you. Good evening. It's great to be here. Great to be here with Senator Whitkos. And it feels like we haven't been here in a while. I'm sorry we haven't been here in a while. I know we had to reschedule a couple times. Sorry about that. But it seems like it was uh, the session that never ended. Actually, it still hasn't ended. We're going back on Wednesday. Um, it was a uh, very uh, challenging session. Obviously, the budget um, dominated the uh, the session. Um, ultimately, uh, Kevin and I voted against the final um, budget. I'll share my concerns over it. Mr. Kalishman, you're out of order. Please, Mr. Kalishman, you're out of order. Please stop. Um, I voted against it because of the lack of really uh, long-term um, uh, structural reforms that we need to do in terms of our state government. Uh, um, I did put in legislation to cap our bonding, which is getting out of control. Very supportive of capping our spending. Um, we're certainly just kicking the can down the road in terms of me moving from crisis to crisis. And uh, I felt that this budget really didn't do enough to address those long-term structural reforms to support um, to support our uh, our businesses and our residences and alleviate some of the burdens on them. Far too often these days, I'm hearing from way too many folks uh, of any demographic, any age, young people, seniors, um, uh, businesses that say, "I can't stay here in Connecticut," and that is so disheartening to folks like uh, so many of us that grew up here. Um, and we are, you know, once a great manufacturing state and thriving and. Uh, we certainly need to do a lot more to get our fiscal house in order. Um, but there were other great topics that we covered just very quickly. Um, I still remain on the aging committee uh, where we dealt uh, with issues such as elder abuse and aging in place initiatives uh, to make sure that we're preparing for the elder tsunami we're expecting in the next 10, 15, 20 years. Um, I still serve on the children's committee where we dealt with addressing toxic chemicals of concerns. Um, concussions, continuing to deal with uh, mental health issues related to children, and uh, that continues to be a great pleasure to serve on that committee. On the Banks Committee, we created a student loan um, bill of rights, making it college, trying to make college more affordable uh, for our young people. On the environmental side, we um, did some tweaking on the statewide water plan, which will be uh, done by 2018, and more and more water is becoming. Uh, a very hot uh, topic as our, as we deal with drought right here in Connecticut, what happened with Flint, what's happening in Bloomfield with the Niagara water plant, um, that we need to have a comprehensive statewide water plan um, in place by 2018. Um, we dealt with the op opioid problem, which is continuing. I know Simsbury Gray has been at the forefront of dealing with that. We made uh, Narcan more accessible uh, for folks dealing with addictions. So we're really pleased um, to have made success in that area. Uh, domestic violence, uh, we made progress in terms of removing uh, firearms from uh, men or, or women involved in domestic violence disputes until those disputes are resolved. Um, so protecting those who are vulnerable in those situations. Um, and we're also, the firefighters have left, but they've done do such great work for us. And uh, we were able to establish a, a firefighter cancer relief fund uh, to support firemen and, and women who are uh, facing cancer-related uh, issues related to their firefighting duties. Um, so a lot going on. Obviously, the latest um, developments regarding the CJEF decision um, is dominating the conversation. Um, basically, they're the judge throughout how we fund our, our schools currently. That decision is being challenged. Um, it's going to be a very vibrant discussion on how we fund our schools and, and making sure that Simsbury students are, are uh, well taken care of and prepared, um, but that all of our students across the state are prepared um, and that we have a competitive, successful uh, workforce. Um, so we'll be addressing that. We are going back into session to deal with um, uh, the agreement made with Sikorsky to keep them uh, uh, here in the state. It's really important that we keep this major flagship uh, company in the state. Um, so there will be some ex tax exemptions that we're going to be voting on as well as some, uh, some grants. Uh, so a lot going on. And I'll turn it up over to my friend Kevin, who I'm pleased to serve with. Thanks, John. Thank you all for allowing us to come before you. I thought we might have been here once after the session, but it kind of just keeps going on, so I'm not quite sure. I don't know, sure, when did the session end? There's, <laughs> yeah. well, there's, 
as you know, it's a never-ending session. In fact, we did five budgets this past uh, year to accommodate uh, the ever-increasing uh, deficit, and that's where we are uh, once again. Uh, we're looking at deficit in fiscal year 2017 because the Office of Fiscal Analysis and the Office of Policy Management, they rounded down the revenue increases in 2016 by $125 million, but that was not carried out, carried forward in the 2017. I, I think you probably hear about that after Election Day, uh, that we do have a you know, projected deficit for 2017, um, but nobody's saying it now. They're saying but that a little bit. If, if you're, <laughs> well, I, I have some really bad news you're not going to want to hear uh, at the end of my comments. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're not here to tell you sugarcoat things. We're just here to tell you the way it is. And um, so uh, not only in addition to that, but part of the savings that was supposed to be realized through uh, state employee layoffs was 2,000 layoffs. But as of September 1, they've only laid off 951. So we're still you know, over 1,000 layoffs short of that anticipated savings, which was built into this year's budget. Uh, I don't know how we're going to get out of that. Beyond that, um, I found out at Avon Day, you know, it's one of the things like September Fest that they have, I was bombarded by residents of Avon uh, that their superintendent sent out a, a letter saying that they were recently cut last, as soon as last week uh, for education funding. So I was on the phone all day today saying, I'm going to be addressing the Simsbury Board of Selectmen. Are they going to receive a cut? And have they been notified yet? And you, are, you will be receiving, if you haven't gotten a call yet, um, the State Department of Education is contacting the superintendents by phone, the letter's coming, but you're going to uh, cut, be cut $115,000 in your education funding. Uh, there's two different portions of funding that come. This is beyond the ECS. This is the project choice. This is for project choice that money. it's going to cut. So you get the project choice. There's two different pots of money. One pot is for the actual student enrollment number. And the other pot of money is for like an incentive type grant to entice the, the districts to take more students. The State Department of Education, beyond the legislature, they decided upon themselves somehow to reduce the amount of money in the incentive pot. So the, what they're saying is the ranges for per pupil go anywhere from 2,000 to 8,000. And if they're cutting the incentive part, the most likely the year on the top end of the uh, reimbursement part. And I think Simsbury is at the 8,000. I'm not 100% sure that. I know Avon's at the 8,000, and they had a sizable amount of money reduced as well. But your money that if Matt hasn't gotten it yet, it's going to be $115,000. And this is after all budgets have been adopted, so I'm sure they'll be coming. They can't absorb that to your Board of Finance or to you guys. Um, however, the governor still has to find $20 million in this fiscal year reduction in municipal aid across all municipalities. So there's no formula. There's no um, anything. It's where he's going to decide where that's going to be cut. That has not been announced yet as well. I think that's going to happen after Election Day. Uh, it was built into the budget. Uh, the legislature did not want to do the hard task of identifying either by formula or by, by line item, who's going to receive the cuts. They said, Governor, you find the money. Um, so that's another additional $20 million in t on top of what you've already uh, been cut. So uh, that's kind of the bad news end of it. Uh, a little bit about the um, Martin Lockheed Sikorsky deal. Uh, that's really an investment in our state. It's not a, a company bailout. Uh, Sikorsky is a global a, co a corporation who is the best in helicopter manufacturing. And right now they have about 7,800 employees at the facility. Uh, I, I don't know if they came, I know they came into the Senate. I think you guys met with them today. But the executives from Lockheed came in as did the Department of Economic Community Development and said if what's going to happen is if we don't get this money, and it's an investment by the state about $8 million a year, $8.6 million a year, um, and then some tax incentives, that we will scale our operations down to about 6,000. And then once we wean off of all the Blackhawks are done, we'll be just be a repair facility and we'll have about 3,500 jobs. And most of the jobs are in the $90,000 a year category jobs. 
and you're just going to lose that. There's 320 suppliers um, scattered throughout Connecticut that supply widgets to Sikorsky, so that would have a demonstrable effect on uh, those folks as well. Uh, with this, this investment by the state, uh, this is based on the Department of Defense, and this is why we're rushing, because they have to report back to the Department of Defense by October 6th. So it's a short window which we have to say that they've got the, the grant money from the state. But that is for a contract of 200 of these uh, heavy lifting helicopters. And that'll take them out two decades, 20 years to do. Our $8 million a year is for a 14 year window frame. At the same time, Sikorsky is also talking to Germany, China, and another country about trying to get them to buy these as well. Uh, so that's in addition to the 200 that the U.S. government uh, is, has already put out to bid RFP. So it's a win for Connecticut, it's a win for Sikorsky, and they've pledged to keep their corporate headquarters here with all the employees, and hopefully if they get all these other um, contracts, then it will be able to increase the production line with more employees, and these are high-paying jobs that you know we so desperately need in the state, not being replaced by the lower and medium-wage uh, type jobs. For the special session, uh, we've tried to go in and say, expand the scope of the special session to enact some of the ch policy changes that we believe are necessary to turn the state around. Um, they're not willing to open that up. And they, meaning the House Speaker and the President Pro Tem, they said, no, we're only going to just do the Sikorsky deal and that's it. Um, I did hear some whispers about the mileage tax may be included in that, if you don't know what that is. Uh, the state of Connecticut budgeted for $300,000 to study or be part of a mileage tax. So depending on what town you live in, if you're in the pilot and you're selected, then they monitor your mileage and you pay a tax based on the number of miles that you drive. So if you're going to school or you're going to work and wherever you're going uh, recreation-wise, you'll be paying a tax based on, on that amount of How do they monitor mileage. that? The GPS or however they do it. I, I don't know that, but... <laughs> Everybody's in the legislature. Everybody in the legislature is saying this is not good. We don't. We won't do this. So uh, we were trying. The Senate Republicans. We were trying to say, well, then let's put that in special session and tell the governor you're not. You can't have the three hundred thousand dollars to spend for a pilot because why would you spend taxpayers' money for something that if <coughs> the entire legislature says we're not going to do it? But the speaker and the president of the of the, uh, the two chambers said no. We're not going to allow that to happen. So. Um, you know, that's going to go forward. They don't, we don't know which community is going to be chosen for the pilot and whether you'll have a right to refuse out of that. It could be a state initiative. I mean, I don't know. And that, that's the thing. We don't know. We don't have any detail about this mileage tax program. Um, I prefer to answer any questions you have, <laughs> anything like that. I mean, that's where we are. We're going in Wednesday, and then, the, you know, we're out until, unless. The news is such that when they do the consensus revenue, which means that's when the comptroller's office compares their numbers to the Office of Policy Management, if it goes variance more than 2%, I think it is, that requires the legislature to come back to do another deficit mitigation plan if we're in the red. And then we'll be back in one more time for a special se session before the new legislature is seated in January. Kevin, with the CJF, the judge gave the legislature 180 days to make corrections. It's now been appealed. Does that stay the 180 days? Yes. Uh, the judge, um, Attorney General Jepson, asked that no, nothing be implemented and the clock doesn't start until after the appeal is heard. And okay. the judge granted that. And we don't believe, with people I've talked to in the legislature don't believe, we believe Judge McCausher overstepped his authority and went way beyond what uh, the scope of what the lawsuit was. Uh, he focused everything on the 2015-2016 budget, but this lawsuit was filed 11 years ago. Uh, so it's interesting on the, all the different aspects that he focused. A lot of it was policy-driven versus, um, I, I think, his what, what, what an interpretation of the law. And a huge impact on special education and those with disabilities, certainly of concern. So at this point, do you have any idea where the legislature is going in terms of reliance not on anything. property? Nothing. No, there's not going to no. be any meetings until after the, the appeal, appeal. So okay. happens. And I don't, I don't even know how long it's going to take them to get on a docket for that appeal. I'm sure it's after the holidays. 
<laughs> yeah, to be honest, Lee, I mean, it's it's not too far away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll open it up to questions from the board. Chris. Uh, the, um, the reference to the 20 million the governor has to find in the budget, any likely categories that just emerge as what he'll have to go after? Well, no, there's no categories. It, it's not defined, uh, Chris. It just says that municipal aid will see a reduction of 20 million. He may say, what we've been pushing is there's a few towns that got extra money um, just because of who's sitting in the legislature and the leadership on the Democrat side. Their towns got more money. So we're saying, we'll pull that first. And then that way, everybody's on an even playing field because, and then figure out where you go from there. Uh, Norwalk, West Hartford, uh, I forget some of the other, Hamden. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that, that's what we're mm -hmm. arguing on. But it's, it's the governor's uh, decision because the legislature ceded that authority to him mm. when they passed the budget because they didn't identify it. So they said, you, you come up with it. So. And we think this will be after November. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, nothing like that's going to happen uh, <coughs> before Election Day. When, when, what is the time frame when it will happen? After November and before? Well, it has to happen this fiscal year. So, I mean, he could wait to see, you know, if the economy all of a sudden turns around and things are looking <laughs> rosier. Uh, I mean, that's why a lot of the times they waited until the April right. uh, tax receipts came in before things came out because they just had the fingers crossed that maybe the income taxes and the personal taxes would have been higher than what they thought would be. So I think maybe the bellwether may be December 31st to, for filing. Maybe they want to wait and see what happens there. So kind of lessen the impact. Because it's going to be bad. It's going to be, you know, towns, especially if on top of the, this cut from the State Department of Education, a lot of communities don't even know about it. And I just found out about it three days ago. And it sounds like you guys didn't even know it was, was happening. So. Right. Oh, this is sunshine and light. Yeah. <laughs> really glad you guys came in. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks guys. It is nice to see you. <laughs> now, actually, I do want to uh, let the public know how great a job both Kevin and John done have worked with me in particular and the entire board in providing us information and getting us updates as quickly as you have the information. And it's been just crucial uh, to have your uh, support and information and the exchange of information. It's been very helpful to us in the budget process. So, so we appreciate that you have um, reached out to us in that way. Well, we thank you yeah. for your partnership as well. So thanks for having yes. us tonight. And um, enjoy the multiple documents. We, <laughs> if you need more information, <laughs> please let us know. But we'll be keeping you posted. All right. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Appreciate thank you so much. Thank you. Um, I'll be, before I begin my first selections report, I do have a special announcement to make. <laughs> that this Friday is a very big day for Jordan Artero, so please join me in congratulating her on her upcoming wedding. Yay! Yay! Okay, we're going to start with that. Had I been thinking, I would have. <laughs> uh, I will do it today. The wedding party. I declare it Jordan yes. Artero Day. <laughs> Wait till the wedding. It is official. <laughs> I'm a little bit like in The Wizard of Oz, right? right. <laughs> okay, so for the first Selectman's report, Chris, you're failing me. Simsbury Farms was recently voted the Farmington Valley's favorite golf course. Oh. Chris. You want me to hold it up? <laughs> I wrong. do. Uh, it was just uh, the Best of the Valley Awards were just announced, and Simsbury Farms was voted the Farmington Valley's favorite golf course. So we're very excited about that. Congratulations, That's Jerry, Culture Parks, and Rec, and all the volunteers who do this. So much for uh, safety first, proud to have uh, Tom Roy here. Safety is a top priority for the town of Simsbury and all our highway and buildings and ground staff have recently been recertified in CPR uh, through training received from the Simsbury Ambulance Association. And in addition to the CPR training, they were also trained in the use of AEDs for adults, children, and infants. And these are life-saving skills that can be used not only for staff in the case of an emergency, but for the public during a, a public emergency as well. And what people may not realize is that public works are often uh, some of the first people to arrive mm -hmm. on a scene. So it is great to have that skill, and we're very um, proud of the whole public works department for going through that training, so thank you. Tom for that. I did want to let folks know that there is a drought advisory in effect statewide and we are asking all Connecticut residents and businesses to voluntarily reduce water demand by 10 percent. 
reductions in lawn watering are encouraged as the best way to meet those conservation goals. You can check out tips on how to conserve water from the state DEEP site. And I have a link to it in my first selections report if people are interested in checking that out. I want to remind folks that it's time to register to vote and uh, apply for absentee ballots. Election day is November 8th. And to find out the most up-to-date information, you can visit the town's website, the Registrar of Voters page. Reevaluation of real estate is still ongoing in Simsbury, so you may see cars around town um, beginning uh, that process. Um, if you have questions, you can reach out to either Sean Kim Kimball or David Gardner can help you with information there. We went, did want to let folks know that with fall upon us, energy assistance is now again available, and you can, um, if you need help applying for the Connecticut Energy Assistance Program, you can reach out to our Social Services Department, 860-658-3283. Everybody Plays Playgroup at the Library uh, for Families Affected by Autism was recently held on se September 16th and was a huge success with over 40 children and 20 parents and caregivers who took part. As you'll recall, this board authorized uh, the library to, to apply for this grant. And we were one of two libraries nationally to receive the project funding from Wel uh, Autism Welcome Here. So congratulations to the library and everyone who's worked on that, particularly April Jones, who coordinated the activities. I wanted to say thank you to all the volunteers, first responders, and town staff who helped make the Arts and Crafts Festival, September Fest, the Grange Fair, the book sale, the fly so successful and fun. It's been a busy time in September, and we're very appreciative of all those who give up their time to coordinate these events. I want to let folks know that Live Longer Stronger is underway. That's Please join the Sinsbury Aging and Disability Commission for free presentations and discussions led by healthcare experts regarding emerging trends across all healthcare settings. All programs will be held at the Sinsbury Public Library from 6.30 to 8 p.m. The first one is September 27th, which is the hows and whys of movement between healthcare settings. October 25th, making the most of your 12-minute doctor's appointment. And November 29th, the impact of medication management on chronic diseases. I want to remind folks that white box to white walk bike to school programs are underway in Simsbury and we're looking forward to that. Latimer Lane is on the 29th, Tooten Hills on October 5th, and Squadron Line on the 7th. Those are always fun events. Thank you to the many volunteers who do that. Trunk or treat at Simsbury Farms is back. Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> that is actually, if you guys have not had a chance to um, visit there, it is a wonderful thing. People park their cars and they decorate their trunks. Mm -hmm. And the, the amount of cre creativity that's there is phenomenal. And then they pass out candy, and I am not judging this year. <laughs> They're quite competitive. Right? <laughs> They're very competitive, and it is spectacular look. So we encourage people to come to that. That's October 29th, and you can call the Sinsbury Farms if you want to reserve a space and decorate. Uh, the Sinsbury Spectacular Chili Challenge is October October 29th, and the Veterans Memorial Project dedication ceremonies on November 13th. In terms of economic development, uh, many of us had the opportunity to attend the Terrafell Water Storage Tank uh, ribbon cutting, which was kind of exciting. You had to go up this huge hill mm -hmm. and you could see the construction site. It was very impressive. So congratulations to everyone who worked on that. I think there were seven boards that had to approve this, including this board. Uh, obviously, the Terrafell um, Water Commission and Fire District did a great job. I also want to point out Woodward and Curtin, uh, Shipman and Goodman, our town attorney who put in hundreds of hours on this project. Mm -hmm. It was a tremendous effort. I'm very pleased to support Terrafell as they um, secure safe water for the, for the community. Uh, grant writing for Simsbury businesses will be offered at the library October 17th at 9.30 a.m. This is a great program if you're interested, if you're a business and interested in knowing how to apply for grants. Uh, I want to let folks know that Wednesday night is business night at the Sinsbury Library. They're trying to make um, a consistent time to meet at the library to go over programming for businesses. So, for example, we've got the gig economy and its impact in finding a job, um, how to manage your career in a, uh, con in, in a gig economy. That's September 28th from 6.30 to 8. Things that will disappear in your lifetime, October 5th and how to use LinkedIn to grow your business on October 26th. Um, I want to let folks know that there are a few ribbon cuttings coming up. We've got Sabre Olive Oil and the Happiest Ink. We'll have a ribbon cutting on October 6th at 4.30 p.m. Um, for those of you who were able to join us at Highcroft, it was a great event mm -hmm. to uh, welcome that new project into town. Best Cleaners um, will be holding a ribbon cutting on October 11th at 12 p.m. In terms of... Uh, 
updates. Uh, I did want to let folks know that the Silverman Group did present its initial plan to the Zoning Commission, if, and if you want to see that, there is a link to the Zoning Commission's meeting um, so you can get an idea of their concept plans that will be coming before the board later. People have expressed a lot of interest in that, and that's the first presentation they've made publicly. So, with that, we will move on to action and stop. It's only about an hour. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> we will get out of here in time to watch the debates. Um, I just want to have dinner. <laughs> well, you're not getting that, but Cheryl did bring food. <laughs> so thank you, Cheryl. Um, we have a motion to approve tax refunds. May I have a motion to approve tax refunds in the amount of $3,825.97? So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Um, can you go get Erica? Oh, has she already left? She may have left. No, I think they just closed. Okay. She just closed up now. So we're going to do this without Erica. This is a grant we apply for every year. Um, Sensbury is hoping to receive a $4,000 grant, which will be used to attach land record images to our electronic land record index. This enables the town to better preserve our documents and provides convenience for title researchers, attorneys, and residents. Oh, there she is. Hi. 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 <laughs> These records will be accessible from home computers. The town clerk will still be collecting $1, but saving on ink and paper when residents print from home. Does anyone have any questions for Erica before she heads out? Thank you, Erica, for bringing those to us. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. May I have a motion to authorize the first selectman to submit and sign the grant application for the targeted grant fiscal year 2017 historic document preservation program? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item C, approve the request for waiver fees for an event at Eno Memorial Hall. We have our submitters here. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you being here. Can you t tell us your names? Um, hello, I'm Sutton Kaler, and this is Jacob Goodwin. And uh, we're seventh graders from Henry James Middle School. We're here to talk about our seventh grade social studies community outreach project. Um, we're thinking of doing a semi-formal dance to benefit Simsbury Social Services. Uh, we're thinking of having it Friday, December 9th, so it's right before the holidays to raise money for upcoming needs. Um, we anticipate about 150 students, and we're going to charge $20 per ticket. Um, we want it at Eno, Eno Hall because um, it's elegant, beautiful. It's outside of the school, and it's the location of Simsbury Social Services. We are here tonight to request that the Board of Selectmen waive the building rental fee for our event, so more money will go directly to the charity. We chose Simsbury Social Services as our charity because we wanted to help our friends and neighbors in our own town. Not only that, but we wanted to spread awareness to our classmates of the need for help right here in Simsbury. Why semi-formal, you ask? Henry James Middle School hosts three social events each year. They all consist of casual attire and recreational activities such as basketball, bounce houses, and games. All three events are in the school gym and cafeteria. We want to offer something special and unique and believe that students will want to attend. We'll publicize the, the dance with posters, morning announcements, social media, word of the mouth, and SCTV. We will secure sponsors to help pay for things like desserts, decorations, DJ, photo booth, custodian fees, and insurance. We will also pre-sell tickets during lunch and at sponsors' places of business. Um, we're thinking of getting 15 or more parent volunteers to help so they can set up, clean up, chaperone, and keep students contained in approved areas. Every student will need to be signed in and out of the event by, adult, by an adult to ensure their safety. Once our seventh grade community outreach project is completed, we will prepare a presentation for our class with photos, videos, a documentation of our planning process, and the final event of handing the check to the Simsbury Social Services. We may even share it on SCTV's education channel. Thank you for your time and consideration. We welcome all questions at this time. Oh, well, first of all, thank you. That was a wonderful presentation. You guys did an yeah. awesome job. It's hard to sometimes speak in public, and you guys are masters at it. Is this the first time you've spoken in public? No. No, <laughs> no rookies. Yeah, no We're rookies here. No. So it, it is clear you guys have, you were very well prepared, and we appreciate your thoughtfulness and willing to contribute back to the community. I just went, we've got Mrs. Kaler here. It's going to be co-sponsored by REMAX, who will cover the insurance as I understand it. Correct. 
So it's not technically a school-sponsored event. I just want to make the public mm -hmm. and this board aware of that. So insurance will ride or will be covered through Remax. Um, we do have Tom Roy here, and as a condition of approval, they have to get um, work with Tom Roy on the specifics of the event. The one thing, guys, about this building, it's historic, and so any damage to it costs a lot more than a damage to a school. And so just you'd want to make sure that you've done everything you can to limit that ability because I know you guys are very responsible sometimes when there's a large group things can get which is why I think it's great that you're going to have volunteers and encourage it to be you know no less than 15 parent volunteers um, I just wanted to uh, reach out to Tom Roy he the reason why Tom Roy is he's in charge of all buildings in town and he'll work with you guys to make sure that it's done in a safe and uh, effective way so that this can be a successful event for you and for the town Tom did you want to I mean, really from the town's end, I mean, this is somewhat um, a little more intensive use than some of the things that go on there just because, you know, believe me, I have a couple of kids of my own about your size. <laughs> um, and what we want to do is just make sure before um, anything goes on there that they have a conversation to make sure um, that we understand what we can and can't do. Um, the building has decorating guidelines, so things like we don't tape anything to the wall, we don't nail anything to the wall, and just being very careful about the mentioned desserts, where that food would be served. And, it, and it's not that we want to limit anybody's fun, but we want to make sure that we don't have an accident that's difficult to clean up. So. Can I open it up to questions from the board? It's open to 7th and 8th graders, Yes, right? yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, mentioned during 7th grade. Mm -hmm. And you've yeah. checked with the school and they're fine with you selling tickets? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. And it's, all, it's all under, you know, we, we want to get your approval first before the details, but the school's aware of it and it's all been asked to them and they're reviewing everything. And can you talk about how this relates to your social studies class because I believe this grew out of Ms. West's class with you? Um, so for the social studies class, uh, project we just want to help the people that are in need in our um, town and um, for the project we have to do something that will benefit those people. Well first of all thank you because it's a very noble event that you're doing and we really appreciate you being here. This is a group that will really benefit from your fundraiser and I think it's great that you're willing to step up and give back and so we're very, very appreciative. Open it up to questions from the board or I, comments? I think there's a lot of really good thought you've already put into it. I think we get a lot of presentations that haven't thought of as many details and you know, Mr. Roy's right, there's a lot more to work out but you guys put a lot of thought into it so great. very excellent job guys. So the one thing we're not able to waive, and we've talked about Ms. Taylor's custodian fees, because we do have to pay that expense, so that'll just be the normal cost. All right. So this is just the rental fees we'll be asking to waive. Okay. All right. So may may I have a motion to waive the Eno Hall rental fees in the amount of seven hundred and fifty dollars to a thousand, but excluding all custodial fees? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Please say aye. 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 The motion carries. Good job, guys. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Good job. work. Have fun. Let us, and, and you know, once you present the check to social services, if you want to come back and do it here, it's yeah, on SCTV. We'd yeah. love to congratulate that you. That would be great. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank we you. We have the donation held, which is the amended fee. Just pointing out. Yes, thank yeah, you. Okay. We've got everyone keeping track of uh, these things. <laughs> we'll move on to Amended D, which is accepted donation from members of the Sinsbury Farms Golf Leagues for the memorial clock in honor of Donald Warner. Uh, before you is a motion to accept with our thanks a donation valued at the amount of $3,200 from members of the various golf leagues at Sinsbury Farms to the purchase of a memorial, memorial clock in honor of longtime starter Donald Warner to be placed near the first tee. We've got Jerry Toner here to speak about uh, to the donation. Thanks, Lisa. Um, as you mentioned, uh, you know, Don Warner was a, uh, a long time, not only a, a golfer at Sensory Farms, but uh, after his retirement uh, from Ensign Vickford Industries, became a starter uh, for us. And uh, was really one of the, the first people, the first person that many people saw when they came up there. And um, uh, I think a big reason why people came back. Uh, very, uh, certainly a very friendly and um, welcoming man, a uh, very valued member of our staff and uh, really uh, admired um, and respected by all the people that played there in all the leagues. And uh, uh, sadly, Don passed away last year, and in his honor, the leagues um, wanted to do something uh, to memorialize him, and the idea of having a clock, um, which the starter uses to make sure everybody stays on, on schedule, uh, seemed appropriate. And um, 
So that was uh, agreed upon, and uh, very generously, the leagues and individuals have contributed, uh, you know, to the memorial. Uh, Mike Wallace, our, our superintendent, is uh, has done the site work uh, for it, and will finish the project. And uh, I think it'll be a, it's a, a, a very nice enhancement uh, to the facility, and I think a very fitting memorial uh, to Mr. Warner. So, with that, we we ask that you accept uh, that donation. Any questions for Jerry? Thank you. May I have a motion to accept a donation from members of the Sinsbury Farms Golf Leagues to a memorial clock in honor of Donald Warner, valued at three thousand two hundred dollars. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. We're going to move on to item E, which I'm going to recuse myself um, from because there's a request for a waiver of fee from the Farmington Valley Jewish Congregation. And I am a member. All right, I just want to make sure I have the right um, I documentation have it, here. Do you, I have it here. Do you need it? Okay. Do you, have Do you all have documentation this relative yes. to this? Okay. okay. We just right. got handed it. Yeah, we got it. Okay. Um, so many items. So we have. Uh, so we have a request to waive uh, the fee, uh, not including the custodial uh, component, um, to the uh, on behalf of the Farmington Valley Jewish Congregation for October 2nd. Um, the Simsbury Meadows Band Shell has been secured for a community uh, Rosh Hashanah event, which is free to all. In the event of inclement weather, we would like to move the event to Eno Memorial Hall. Um, in the, in the case of inclement weather, the decision would be made no, long, no later than 3.30 p.m. the day of the event. The event itself would run from 4.30 to around 5.45. So I would just make a motion that we uh, approve the waiver of the fees in case the, of the utilization of Eno Memorial Hall. I'll second that. Any further conversation? Mm -hmm. Tom, um, is something? I have a question yep. for you. So they're only, this is their backup facility. This is so their backup. They may not even need that's to go correct. to email. Right. Okay. The one, the one and I apologize. Right. I didn't see that you were there to speak yes, to this uh, issue. <laughs> <laughs> Which would have been much Just more articulate there, than me Chris. grinding my way through it. So uh, is there some additional information you'd like to provide? No, this is only a backup plan. Excuse okay. me. Excuse, Excuse me. Please. It, it's a backup plan uh, if the weather turns against us uh, that we have someplace dry for this uh, community event. Great. 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 Thank you. Sounds Do you great. have a rough idea of how many people you're expecting? Since it's open to the community, no. Uh, we, we, Is this we the first time you've had it? No. Two years ago, we had it at the uh, band shell, mm -hmm. uh, and there was roughly 100 people or so that stopped by, said hello, mm -hmm. whatever. Oh, Last that. year, uh, we did it at the Apple Barn, and uh, it was pouring. <laughs> Uh, I was not there, but I was told we filled the Apple Barn, but mm -hmm. I don't know how many people the Apple Barn holds. Okay. Well, you know, probably holds more than the Apple mm -hmm. Barn. So and, and it's so closer to the band yeah. shell. Yeah. And so, yeah. 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 so, yeah. yeah. Good. Uh, Thank so you. So this is our backup plan in case it rains. Uh, but we're hoping that's that it doesn't. And we'll only be in there perhaps two hours. We don't need anything. We have our own amplifying equipment and everything. There's no food. There's no setup. We just need an electrical outlet, and really, that's it. Okay. okay. Any further questions? No. No. All right. All who approve, say aye. 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 Any against? The motion carries. Michelle Tova in advance. Tom, can you let Lisa know she can come back in? Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Thanks a lot. This is the point where I usually amend the agenda to name a street after her. Yeah, is so about this. creative though. I named the sewage treatment plant after you, and you had to recuse yourself. Okay. My dad didn't want it named after him. Oh well, we could do that. We could we could find a way. I told him we could make that happen. Oh, you know. We couldn't decide it what to name debate, after you, we Lisa. Did, we, we were debating. It was <laughs> vigorous. <laughs> that was you a tough guys one. Guys are so mean. All right, we will now go on Enjoy to what we do. <laughs> appointments and resignation. Uh, can I please have a motion to acknowledge the resignation of Andrew? O'Connor is a regular member of the Conservation Commission, effective September 7, 2016. So moved. So moved. You, you want to make that a second? Second. second. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. May I have a motion to appoint Jane Kimball, a Democrat, as a regular member of the Community for Care with an expiration date of December 4, 2017. So, so second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 
May I please have a motion to appoint Richard Jones to the Ethics Committee? He's an unaffiliated. Is that, there are two Richard yes. Jones on the roll, so I wanted to make sure we have the correct one. That's Richard Jones of 248 Old Farms Road, Simsbury, okay. Connecticut. Um, and we are, uh, Personnel Subcommittee has nominated him, and I um, move a motion to appoint Richard Jones uh, to complete the unaffiliated term of Polly Mayer, who um, has resigned for a term that concludes on January 1st of 2017. I'll second, second that. Up. And we did confirm during the interview process that he was an unaffiliated okay. Correct. Yep. Thank you. So okay. that's a <clears throat> motion by Chris, second by Sean. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Uh, may I have at their last Board of Finance meeting, uh, their board appointed Robert Pomeroy and Linda Schofield to be the Board of Finance representatives of the Special Revenue Fund Committee. But, but because this is a Board of Selectmen Committee, we actually have to do the formal appointment. So may I have a motion to appoint Robert Pomeroy and Linda Schofield to the Special Revenue Fund Committee? So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. We'll go on to the review of the minutes, regular meeting of September 12th. Does anyone have any um, changes they want to make to those minutes? If not, those will become the final minutes. Okay, seeing none, we'll go on to uh, Selectman Liaison and Subcommittee reports and begin with personnel and Chris. Okay, thank you. Um, we have three things, two, uh, all of which have been reviewed and approved and are being moved to you by the Personnel Subcommittee. Uh, the first two are revisions to job descriptions, and the third is a recommendation on unaffiliated compensation. Starting with the revision to the first job description, which is the Library Head of Children's Services. As you can see in the description, uh, what has been adjusted is to update this since it was last written in 2001 to reflect the uh, current responsibilities of the position. Many of these are building in more coordination slash management of than existed previously. Most of those you'll see are really on the very first page of the revised job description. You know, the example I'll give you is I think there's 20 bullets of essential job duties, whereas the old description had eight. Uh, there are no um, changes uh, or financial impact as a result of this change of job description, so I would move approval of the revised Head of Children's Services job description. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Uh, the second job description is a revision to the Public Works uh, project, administra pro project Administrator in Public Works. Uh, this uh, job description change uh, mostly reflects the um, addition of uh, hours of work that the role will be serving uh, by, I think, an additional five hours, if I'm correct, Tom. Um, it will result in a salary grade change, uh, which the uh, grade will move 13.96%, uh, adjusting it from 55626 to 66479 is what it cu currently is, to a new 63394 to 75764 uh, and I would point out that this is uh, a position within the Administrative and Professional Employees Association. So I make a motion to approve the amended uh, job description for the Project Administrator, Public Works. Second. Any questions or further discussion? I have a question, yep. Chris. Um, I'm assuming that within that job description, the number of hours they're working is reflected in there? I believe it is. Um, yes, but what we really would do is could we simply make a change to the um, existing job description and keep it at the same salary grade and effectively add the five hours on? And when we did that, it fell directly in line with the pay grade for the eighth rate, which is a 40 hour week versus 35 hour week. Okay, I just want to make sure that everybody understands that it's going to be 40 hours, not 35. Yep. yep. No, I appreciate that. Other than that, I'm, I'm absolutely fine with it. Thank you. Any further questions for members of the board? We have a motion and a second. Is that right? Yep. Mm -hmm. All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Thank you, Tom. Can I move to the third item? Yes. Yep. So we have uh, the personnel subcommittee has reviewed and has recommendations for you in relation to the unaffiliated compensation plan for or adjustments for fiscal year 2017. We actually reviewed and, vote, and voted on three specific components, uh, one of which is the unaffiliated um, 
um, pool increase. And the second is we have special adjustments that's based upon a competitive review that we did last year. And the third is that we have uh, an additional um, special adjustment that is based upon adjustments to job descriptions. So what I would suggest as a process is that I'll make a motion and if someone could second and then I could briefly explain you know, each of the categories and then we can make a vote if that makes sense, Lisa. That's fine. Okay. So the first is the salary increase for our unaffiliated positions and I'm making a motion for a 2.5% increase retroactive to July 1st for the following positions. Chief of Police, Police Captain, Deputy Director of Administrative Services, Director of Administrative Services, Director of Culture, Parks and Recreation, Director of the Library, Director of Public Works, Director of Planning and Community Development, Executive Assistant to the First Selectman, Benefits and Human Resource Coordinator, and town engineer. The two positions that are not included in here, director of finance um, and town clerk, is a result of the hiring of those two positions and su such are not eligible for these increases. Uh, the 2.5 percent is consistent with what we did last year. It's um, part of what we try to do is look at what the collective bargaining agreements are. It's consistent with that and from our own kind of anecdotal sense, we feel it's fairly consistent with what you're seeing in the private sector. And I second that motion. Open it up for questions from the board. Um, Chris, you didn't use the year, but it's July 1st, 2016. You're right. Okay. Yes. That's fine. Thank you. Just wanted to yep. that. Any further questions? Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. All right. The second is I'm making a motion for two market reference range adjustments. One is a 2.5% increase for the chief of police, and the other is a 2.5% increase for the police captain. I'll explain it after we second it, at least I'll if you want. That. All right. So last year, we, uh, the town occasionally, not every year, uh, but occasionally, and had been a number of years, that what the uh, staff did and the personnel subcommittee looked at was basically identifying a set of benchmark communities and then uh, which is a was a group of about eight communities and then we looked at all of our unaffiliated positions and what our salary ranges as well as what our actual compensation was in relation to other communities and if you remember last year we came to you with a number of adjustments to about five or six positions in addition to the unaffiliated increase that we just approved based upon what we saw within that competitive analysis. Subsequent to that decision last year, the um, chairman of the police commission approached us and first of all, specific to the chief of police, um, we had moved the chief of police who was very low down in the comparison up, but he felt that we had not made uh, a move substantial enough um, to really validate the decision that we had made. So that is why we have the 2.5% increase there. We re-looked at the numbers again um, this year. And relative to the police captain, uh, what the um, chairman of the police commission pointed out to us is that the, comp the comparison towns that we use included a subset of three towns that have one police captain as opposed to two. And when we looked at what he proposed is that when you look at those towns that have one police captain versus two, the compensation is significantly higher in those situations. So what he asked that we do is we re-review the decision we made for the police captain relative to that we did and we've recommended a two and a half percent additional increase for the police captain. And I think that, that Chris, you did a, a great job of capturing, I think, our entire discussion. We, we, we discussed this at length. We went through a number of scenarios. We wanted to make sure that we were thinking about this the right way and, and going going through it with, with a thoughtful analysis, and, and, and I think we, we did do that. So um, I think, as I said, your, your words articulate our discussion very well. So, And I would just like to thank the uh, Police Commission for all their work in bringing this to our attention. Um, they did a lot of work and helping us with the analysis and then um, opened it up to us for, for a very good discussion and they participated in that discussion, which yeah. was very helpful. And I would reiterate, this was a very data-driven discussion and if anyone wants to get a little bit more insight into what we were looking at, I'd be more than happy to meet with people, so. Well, thank you, appreciate that. Any further questions?
We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. All right. And the third one is based upon a review to several job des descriptions that we've done recently. We have two uh, uh, special adjustments based upon those changes to job description. The very first one is the executive assistant to the first selectman. Um, we have made a recommendation of a special adjustment of 7.5 percent for that position. Um, I'm actually making a motion to, um, let me finish, and then the second was the benefits and human resource coordinator, uh, which we are making a recommendation for an additional 2.5 percent special adjustment. So I make a motion to have a 7.5 percent salary job description special adjustment for executive assistant and a 2.5 percent for benefits and human resource coordinator. And I second that. A question. It, it says here for these reasons an increase of 10 percent is. 10 percent is the total, Lisa. Okay. So it's the two and a half plus the seven and a half percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Uh, any further question? We have a motion. We have a second. Um, same question again, Chris. These are retroactive to July 1st? Yes, they are. Okay. Of 16. Yes. Thank you. And it should be noted that, and again, the submission says it, but that we're increasing the um, executive assistant position's hours by five hours per That's week. That's right. Which I know is why that too. number is, is significant. It's, it's similar to what we did with the public works position. Yeah. As, you know, that role has increasingly um, expanded as a result of more communication in the first selectman's office and other pressures and I believe um, the the uh, executive assistant is going to be participating more so on the uh, some of our HR system that's right mm -hmm. that's in terms exactly of additional right. paperwork and processing which we desperately need because of our limited staff in other areas so mm -hmm. yeah. that's a good point John expanded yeah. time as well as expanded right. responsibilities right. well and there are additional expanded responsibilities that you know we haven't even touched on um, in addition to what Sean pointed out um, for um, auditing, processing, employee paperwork, all that type of stuff. And that's in addition to regular responsibilities of the executive assistant. All right. We have a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries unanimously. Chris, we do have one more, right? We well, is that what? I don't it's believe that we actually need to. Uh, no, it's actually, I think, Sean, you're referring to the retirement plan option? I am, yeah. Okay. Because there are changes on the D.C. plan. Do we need to do that one? Or is that? I thought we didn't have to. I thought uh, we didn't. Um, I think I thought this okay. was a statement that if there were you're down right. the road some adjustments, you're right. That we would reserve, and we should make. Sean, you're right that we should make note of this okay. for right. people. So I appreciate that. Okay. Um, do you want to? Do you want to make the note for everyone? <laughs> what I what I brought up. Yeah, <laughs> what you brought up. Yeah. So as as most of you know, and every year I take the opportunity to discuss where we are from a, a, a retirement plan standpoint, and. Um, I think it's important that this board and, and personnel first have a, a meaningful discussion around um, our defined benefit plan and whether that plan is going to continue to be an option or not for new hires. Um, I feel, str and I, again, I'm, I'm not talking about current employees, I'm only talking about new hires, and I'm only talking about um, the, the full time unaffiliated employees at this point. So, again, this is a non union discussion. Um, but I, I think it's important that we continue to look at that and make sure that we're managing the town's risk and balance sheet um, as wisely and as, as frugally as we can. And uh, as you all know, and you've heard me every year, the defined benefit plan, I think, um, adds, adds a fair amount of risk to, um, to our cost structure everywhere every year. And I, for one, think that it's time to strongly consider doing away with it as an option. Um, again, for new employees, this would not impact any current employees. Um, and I think it's important for us to continue to lead on things like this, especially as we enter contractual negotiations with the unions and we, we continue to, to work hard to manage our, our balance sheet risk and our costs. I think this is a discussion that's going to, um, if we don't have it this year, we're, we're going to have it next year. And we don't have, we're, we're going to need to have it at some point. There are municipalities that have moved towards removing um, the defined benefit plan as an option for new hires, and, and I think we ought to strongly consider it. We can do studies on either end of it, and I'm sure one study will tell you a DC plan saves you money, and one study says a DB plan will save you money. I think it's more of a philosophical discussion of whether we, we think it's time to remove the balance sheet risk or not. Um, so again, that's that's what I, I uh, brought up at the at the meeting, and I think we're going to discuss it at the personnel level, and then have a mm -hmm. a recommendation or not for this board at some point in the near future. Is that yeah, exactly. Okay. 
Um, does anyone else have any uh, liaison or subcommittee reports? Just a brief one. Uh, Chris and I had the honor of attending the Long Range Planning. Um, I, I think that that group is, is really doing a good job of continuing to build um, some really good metrics and benchmarks to really understand where we're at um, from a financial standpoint and, and a risk standpoint as we look at budget items and we look at revenue items. Um, I know I'm excited, I think, not, not to speak for Chris, but I think he's excited as well about having that data at our disposal as we continue to make tough budget decisions. Um, I did remind the Board of Finance, and I, uh, Chris helped me, that um, they, they, I believe, chose not to fund our study for all of our town facilities, and in my opinion, that is one of our biggest risks is, you know, we have 33 town facilities, either large or accessory, and I don't want everybody to think we have 33 buildings. We have you know, sometimes shacks or buildings. Um, but we really, I think, need to get a good handle, as Tom Roy and the town engineer, Jeff, um, articulated last year. You know, when do we prioritize them? What needs roof, windows, full full re, you know, rehabilitation, et cetera? And I, for one, and um, I, I think this board would really like to have that information to know what our, our capital plan is from a building standpoint. And I think the Board of Finance took a step, at least the two representatives on that, took a step back and realized the importance of that, including the Board of Ed facilities in that study, so that when we sit and have a capital discussion and we're deciding how to spend our 7%, is it truly going where the need is? Um, and you know, I think we've done a really good job to manage that. But again, I think this is another set of metrics and hard information that we can use to make tough decisions or not. Um, so I, for one, am excited about, uh, I think, uh, having the opportunity to get that back on the docket. So we should probably confirm whether we're going to do that as a special um, item or, or not, because I think it's in our best interest to do it sooner rather than later, because I know it takes time to do a study like that. And it requires a lot of engineering expertise and, and, and a lot of legwork. So. That's about a $400,000 item. That is, is. It is. That it's, was one it's that substantial. we cut. That yeah. was one of our cuts. So I will design. say this was something this board was very supportive of, and, it was, and it's recommended as a best practice by GFOA. So yep. it was disappointing to see that cut because it is a best practice out there, and it's kind of crazy yep. not to do it. Agreed. And, you yeah. know, I, I think it, it's a matter of timing, and, you know, the Board of Finance, I think, they had a $92 million budget before them. They're looking at, you know, big renovations and big pictures, and I'm, I'm not sure that I articulated the message or we articulated the message in a way that got through to them. So I, I'm really glad that they are reconsidering. Yeah. Um, if you know, I remember I correctly, we were all, that was a cut that none of us was we really did not happy about that. having to make. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm, I'm hopeful that I, it sounds like we have at least uh, some more receptivity to that uh, showing back up either in our next capital plan or a, as a special item now, although with the news this evening, I don't, I don't know where we're going to stand. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I, you know, yeah, again, I for sure. one, I'm not necessarily a proponent of studies, but I think that one is is one that really does make sense. So. Well, you do studies when they're best practices, and GFOA recommends yep. this as a best practice, so yep. it, it, it does make sense. It's not just us recommending it, it is a recommendation of GFOA. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so any further uh, comments? Okay, so I'm going to need a motion to move into executive session um, for discussion. Hold on. Pursuant to Connecticut General Statutes 1 206B pending litigation, it's actually Timothy Martin versus the Town of Simsbury, and pursuant to Connecticut General Statutes 1 206D to discuss a letter received concerning 894 Hot Meadow Street. So moved. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Nope. All in favor, we, are, we will be getting into executive session. <laughs> yeah. I. I don't.